Hello everyone, this is Matt from TracyMatt.co.uk and an exciting unboxing this morning for inside this plain white box we have HTC's latest Android handset, the HTC Legend. So we're going to do a quick unboxing for you, a little tour around the handset and then a little preview of the uh, operating system uh, before we actually head off and do our full review. As you can see, plain white box, not full retail, but the retail packaging will follow much the same um, sort of format as this. Obviously, be a little bit prettier on the outside and um, printed, but uh, to all intents and purposes, it's effectively what we're going to get on retail. So the handset itself is presented immediately on top, as you can see there, uh, wrapped in this plastic, which is fairly typical of, uh, of handsets we're seeing like this at the moment. So it all unpeels like so, and we have the handset just like that. Come back to that in just a moment, have a look at what else is in the box first. Battery is also on top, pops out like so, and uh, is the capacity listed? Yeah, it's listed at 1300 milliamp hours. Not ever such a heavy battery, quite thin and uh, quite lightweight. So further on inside the box, we have a UK 3 pin plug, which we won't worry to open, and then we have the standard USB style wall charger which obviously the three pin plug pops into and we have a USB style connector on the top which we plug in a USB sync charge cable which is also in the pack here we just open which has a standard USB connector on one end and a micro USB connector on the other used for sync and charge uh, hooking up to computer that sort of stuff then finally in the box we have a headset, which just unpack. So uh, we have a clip there for clipping it onto clothing and a couple of foam ear covers. And then the headphones themselves, which are fairly HTC typical to be honest with you. We've got a four pole, three and a half pole jack on one end, uh, and then a length of cable. Then there is an inline microphone with a couple of push buttons, so the one in the center for answering and hanging up your calls, also playing and pause your media, and then uh, skip forward and backwards on your tracks when you're actually listening to your music. Headphones themselves are um, aren't bad. They're what we see on practically all the HTC headsets now, or handsets now. Um, they all seem to come with this style of uh, headphones. Uh, they're okay, uh, certainly not the best, but you know, they're really not the worst. They are pretty straightforward hand, uh, headset. But uh, I suspect that most people will probably use their own headphones with, uh, with almost every handset anyway. So that's all there is inside the box. Uh, when it comes to full retail, you'll expect to see things like um, manual warranty card and you know, that sort of stuff, getting started guides. So obviously much has been made of the construction of the legend. It is uh, carved from a single block of aluminium or aluminium for our American friends. Uh, so it makes it extremely solid and uh, you know, clean lines. There's no seams, there's no joins. Uh, apart from obviously you've got around the areas around the battery door and everything else, but in terms of the actual handset itself, there's no seams and joins. Pretty good looking handset. Uh, interestingly, this one is kind of cold because it's just arrived with the courier, and uh, so it's something you notice certainly from the fact that it's sort of carved from aluminium. It does fairly, it feel fairly cold in the hand, so it's kind of interesting. On the front, then we have a 3.2 inch display, which is 320 by 480 pixels which is a fairly standard resolution for an Android handset, but it is a super bright AMO LED display, um, and they do look fantastic. We'll come up to power up on, uh, power on in a moment. Underneath the display, we've got a home button, menu button, back, and a search button. Again, fairly standard um, Android sort of, um, function buttons there underneath. And then we have the optical trackpad, which uh, is better, in my opinion, than the trackball. Um, optical track pads, they uh, don't suffer from you know, gouging up with fluff and, fluff and dust, uh, they tend to last a lot longer and uh, I think they're just a little bit more attractive than a uh, trackball personally. On the left hand side we have up and down volume control, nothing really other than that to see uh, down the left hand side. On the bottom we have the connector which is the micro USB sync charge connector, hole next to that is uh, actually just the microphone there. And uh, on the right hand side, well we actually don't have anything at all to really speak of on the right hand side. Very clean, as you can see there, clean lines. And uh, which makes it, you know, I think it makes it look that much more attractive where there's nothing really to, um, you know, interfere with the, you know, the design there. On the top, power button and a 3.5mm headphone connector. So that's where you plug in your headset. 
or indeed your own headphones that have a 3.5mm headphone connector. So on the bottom, the other part of the bottom is the uh, battery door which uh, does just pop off like so and opens up completely. Uh, interestingly, because this is a completely aluminium design, to put the antenna inside an aluminium block, you're basically going to block out your antenna. So the battery door here has a couple of connectors on it as you can see. That is what becomes your antenna. So the antenna is actually outside of the aluminium shell, which does really improve the you know the overall um, you know reception and quality and everything else. And then the battery pops in the bottom. A SIM card also pops in the bottom portion here. So we slide, pull the little metal tab there, which opens this flap. SIM card goes in here, a micro SD card goes just next to that inside this bottom part here. It's possibly slightly fiddly to get to, but uh, you know it, it does the job. Um, and then obviously the battery pops in over the top, which is, goes in like so. That's our battery in. The cover goes down. And uh, then we actually just put the battery compartment cover back on, which obviously secures the antenna in place as well. On the back we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with a flash. Good to see Android devices having a fairly decent camera and a flash on the back there. And then we have a little design around the loudspeaker on the back. Uh, nice HTC logo and obviously with Sense too. As you can hear, it's just powered up. So why are we waiting for that to turn on? Let me run down the rest of the uh, specification. Weight 126 grams, doesn't feel particularly heavy. Uh, it does feel quite nice in the hand because it's all metal. Uh, as I say, it's quite cool to the touch. Uh, it just kind of feels nice in your hand. Obviously the design is very good as well. Uh, and nice and sort of angular and curvy on the back. That's quite cool. 600 MHz uh, processor is a 7227 processor. So 600 MHz runs along quite nicely. We also do have 512 meg of ROM and 384 meg of RAM, so things should run pretty quickly. Um, decent amount of RAM and ROM, and obviously a decent processor. Say so 3.2 inch display is 320 by 480 pixels, multi-touch touch screen, and it is an AMO LED display. Quad band for GSM, tri band for HSDPA. This handset will work pretty much wherever you take it throughout the world, um, roaming and everything else, and uh, it works perfectly okay. Just wait for that to come on. There's no SIM card and we'll skip back out of that because uh, we don't really want to install a sim card also we have a built in G sensor for when you rotate the display and also we do have a digital compass, proximity sensor, ambient light sensor all the things that you pretty much come to expect from you know, high end handsets now, GPS, those sorts of things and uh, which is asking me to set up so we'll uh, set it up for the United Kingdom we'll go to next uh, it's telling me to uh, insert the SIM card, we'll skip that for now. Telling you about the on-screen keyboard, we'll skip. Internet connections, we'll also skip. Connecting to a Wi-Fi network. So we'll add a Wi-Fi network and I'll connect to my one here at home. Okay, we've just connected to a Wi-Fi network and we'll, we'll allow it to use our location. We'll skip setting up accounts just for a moment. And we'll skip setting up this. This is all um, for setting up Friendstream, so it's asking me about setting up Facebook, Flickr and Twitter. We'll come to that again in a little while. And setting the time, again, I'm just going to accept those at the moment. Uh, they are actually, uh, they look to be about right in actual fact, so we'll just skip all through through this. So we can actually get to start up. Okay, and after a few seconds we are actually there, so we actually do load up the home screen. And if you've seen other HTC devices, you're probably going to recognize this anyway. Um, it is the HTC Sense interface that we see on um, you know, the, the Hero and other, other devices like that. So we're just uh, okay with that. It's taking about the pinch to zoom. This is the main home screen. Obviously, you've got the clock on the weather there. Messages, mail, internet, and camera. Then we can get into the phone by just tapping down the bottom here, dialing the number. And because it is a capacitive touch screen, as you can imagine, it is extremely sensitive. It doesn't require any pressure to actually make it work, so that's pretty cool. There also is a bit of a, a, a haptic feedback when I actually touch the screen, it vibrates inside just, just enough to actually um, tell us that we touch the screen. And obviously, when we're in the phone dialer anyway, you actually do get the tones from the keypad anyway. So we'll just actually skip back out of there, and we'll go back to and we'll go back to home screen. On the side, we can actually bring up the programs list. So uh, we just tap that and we actually bring up all the programs, so we've got things like desktop, foot, footprints, Gmail in there as you come to expect, Facebook, 
camcorder as an item there itself, which is quite cool, corporate calendar. And we scroll up, we've got the Android Market Peep, which is a pretty cool Twitter client that uh, I think most people have come to uh, sort of love with HTC uh, devices. Peep is pretty cool for actually uh, using Twitter, but obviously we do have Friendstream on here, which we're gonna look at in a little while as well. So have weather on YouTube, voice recorder, all the sorts of things that, again, you come to expect from an Android device, but they are all here. So we just come back out of there and we can flick around the display. So we have, in actual fact, on uh, all of uh, HTC's new Android handsets, we do actually have seven screens. So on the first one here, we have the weather app. This can all be customized though, but first of all, we actually do have the weather app. Then we have uh, text messages, and we have mail. Then we have the main home screen, which has the time and the weather, and also a couple of icons down the bottom. We then have our contacts page, we have our bookmarks page, and then we have a blank one. So that's seven of those actual displays there, as you can see. We can add in additional widgets and shortcuts. So under widgets, we can add in things like uh, the actual corporate calendar, corporate calendar or the uh, internal Android calendar, if you like, uh, clock, uh, Facebook, friend stream, and loads of other bits and pieces. So I'm actually gonna go out of here. I'm gonna go all the way back to this empty screen, and I'm going to add in a widget and I'm going to add in FriendStream for now. There we go. And we'll add in FriendStream. Gonna set that up in a moment, but that is how easy it is actually to set up any of these new widgets. Uh, and similarly, adding icons to the actual display, which I could do here. I can hold down my finger on the touch screen there, or I can press the add button, and we can add a program. And let's add in the calendar, for example. And that will allow me just to simply go straight into the calendar. Haven't got anything set up at the moment, obviously, because we haven't set up any synchronization, no accounts or anything else, although we are actually connected to the internet. And one of the other things that's uh, fairly in innovative about uh, HTC's implementation of Android is what they call Leap. So if we pinch on the display, we actually can see all seven panels or tabs in one view. So uh, if, for example, we were all, way, all the way over at uh, the seventh panel, on the far right hand side and we want to get all the way over to the left hand side we can either swipe all the way through which you know, kind of takes a few seconds whoops I managed to click on the weather there but it takes a few seconds to do or it's kind of a little bit cumbersome or if we didn't know which panel a particular if we didn't know which panel a particular item was on uh, we can actually see it there and that is a live uh, feed or actually a live version of what is going on in each of those panels it's not static so we can go to a particular panel uh, telling me our SD card's not installed, obviously I haven't put one in. Um, interestingly, there's not one in the box, but I assume there'll probably be one with a full retail. Um, I would have thought at least two, four gig um, will actually come with the handset. So we can go back to the home screen. That takes us all the way back here. Again, pop into here. And let's just have a look at the browser. So we pop onto the internet. And let that load up. So it takes us initially to HTC's website. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to train, change that to Tracy and Matt. And just choose that and just see how quickly that loads and renders on this display well it's loading pretty fast obviously I'm connecting over Wi-Fi using a broadband connection but it is loading pretty damn quickly and that is the page loaded so that is impressive on how quickly it loads and renders I can rotate the display and it does rotate around very very quickly I would say and scrolling through it's pretty sweet there it does scroll with momentum and does scroll, scroll quite smoothly uh, I can tap on an area of text and we do have the reflow so where text it has expanded and would have otherwise not fit on the display it has actually done reflow where it's ch changed all the layout so that text does fit perfectly on the display so I can actually use that to actually read through that particular item there and I can just tap again and it goes back to normal and the, you know, the reflow is kind of undone if you like and actually just lays the page out as you'd expect it. Um, Perhaps what doesn't really come across in the video here, it's a little bit more difficult to actually see, is that uh, the screen is fantastic. The super bright AMO LED 
display is brilliant in fact colors are fantastic especially around orange orange and green is fairly difficult i think um for yeah, displays to actually uh, show um screens to actually show and for orange and green to come out as as bright and um as rich as they are there i think is brilliant absolutely brilliant and i haven't turned the brightness up to full if we actually go ahead and do that and we actually skip out of here let's pop into the actual uh, settings we push the menu button there we can go into settings and let's go ahead and change uh, the sound of the display and let's change the brightness turn off automatic brightness and we'll turn the brightness right up to full and go back to the home screen that's now at full brightness and it's brighter than you would really need it. It's definitely brighter than you would need it. Uh, it's uh, that is excessively bright. Again, probably doesn't really come across too well on the video. Because obviously the video re recorder, video camera, is adjusting its uh, you know brightness and uh, you know obviously exposure settings there. But that is brighter than you would need it. Um, certainly on the sunniest of days, I think that would be very good. And the screen it doesn't seem to be overly reflective. Obviously there is a certain amount of uh, you know shine because obviously it is a glossy display, a certain amount of shine and reflection but um, it seems to work quite well it is a glass display after all but, uh, so you know, that does work out quite good camera, let's just pop into the camera app and so it's pretty standard stuff to be honest with you it's the sort of thing that we come to expect from the HTC style interface but um, let's bring in HTC Hero there and we'll just take a quick snap of that So. Take a quick snap. Oh, I can make it forced off or auto. Let me adjust the settings along the side there for the zoom. And I can zoom in and zoom out. There's digital zoom, but that works quite well. And then we can pop back out there. So there's the camera app. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And while I have the HTC Hero here, we can look at the two side by side. Uh, obviously the legend is kind of, well, I'd say replacing the hero, but the hero will still be on sale. Um, but obviously the legend is kind of the updated version of that, of the hero. So as you can see there, two side by side. Quite similar in design, obviously with the bit at the bottom that just kicks up. The legend is uh, not so pronounced. Um, the angle doesn't appear to be exactly the same. Uh, and it's a little bit more subtle at the bottom there. I quite like um, what many of us call the chin at the bottom. I think that looks quite nice. Uh, and I think that it makes the design just that look that little bit different as well. Um, as you can see there, we can actually swipe up and forwards using the optical pad. Um, yeah, yeah. in terms of overall you know, design, they are fairly similar. In terms, in, you know, including placement of buttons, obviously the bottom, up and down volume control there is here. Connectors are obviously on the bottom buttons on the top, you know, those sorts of things, very similar, display size is uh, practically the same, but uh, the Legend do does have uh, a better display, it's a nicer, brighter AMOLED display versus the Hero, um, although they are much the same size, button layouts are practically the same, um, optical trackpad versus the trackball, Track, uh, the optical one is that much better in my opinion. Um, weight difference, well, they're virtually the same, um, but obviously the Legend is the newer one with the updated version of Android, Android 2.1, and obviously the newer version of Sense and everything else. So that's your comparison there anyway. They're very similar in sort of overall look, but the experience obviously is going to be quite different anyway. So that's the two there. So that is, uh, well, pretty much a, a quick tour around the, the Legend itself. Uh, we looked at a couple of bits and pieces in terms of what the operating system and user of interface can offer but uh, I'm going to have a more extensive video later on for you I'll go uh, into a place where it's a little bit darker and there will be a bit less reflection we'll set up things like uh, you know the friend stream and those sorts of stuff uh, do another do another video for you that's a little bit more detailed so don't forget to follow us on Twitter on Twitter we are Tracy and Matt I'll tweet whenever we have an update on the site and whenever I have more videos and things like that for you so you can immediately know when we've actually made an update. So I'll be back later with a full video of the HTC Legend and uh, we'll see you again soon on tracingmat.co.uk.